Hi everyone, welcome to week 13 of our organization challenge. And if you're new here, welcome. You can start this challenge at any time. You don't have to start at the beginning, but if you choose to do so, I do have all of them on my channel. And you can also visit my blog to see a list of all the tasks and everything we've been doing for the past 13 weeks. So the theme for this month is inspiration and we've already discussed uh, books and patterns and magazines and I think it's really important to di also discuss digital content because a lot of us get our inspiration from digital sources as well as paper sources. Places like Pinterest and Facebook groups and Instagram and YouTube all are great resources and there's plenty more that we could talk about. However, sometimes you can get really bogged down with these groups and get overwhelmed. For me at least, two things happen. I either get into these groups and then I, I just waste a ton of time searching for things and pinning things to my boards and things I never go back and look at or I'll watch Instagram videos or the reels or even Facebook groups and read the posts and then I never get anything done. I kind of go down this rabbit hole and then the other thing that happens to me is I get discouraged because I see some of the beautiful work people are doing and I kind of compare myself and you know comparison is the stealer of joy, right? So sometimes we get into these ruts or maybe there's negative comments and we'll read them and it just kind of can be a negative experience too. But overall, it's a really great resource for us, but we do, I feel at least for me, I have to regulate it somehow. One of the ways to do that is to clean up our digital resources. For example, I know there's a few groups I'm in on Facebook that I really just don't gain inspiration from. Either the comments are getting negative or you know people aren't really sharing the things that I'm interested in. So maybe it's time for me to, to clean up my digital resources and that's what I'm, I'm challenging you to do this week as well. So let's first talk about Pinterest. For me at least, I'll pin things onto boards and then I never go back and look at them and they're kind of messy and I don't have them organized. So this week I really am gonna challenge myself to go through and pick the things I wanna make and maybe even create a board that says projects I want to make and put everything that I really want to make into that and clean up all those folders that I have saved on Pinterest. And with Facebook, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the Facebook groups I'm in, maybe leave a few, maybe even add a few and see really where I can get the best information and inspiration and also where I can maybe contribute too as a maker. Uh, now Instagram. Instagram happens to be my favorite social media site. Well, of course, besides YouTube, but uh, my favorite is Instagram and I could spend hours on Instagram. In fact, I kind of do sometimes and I love seeing the reels and how makers are making things. I like learning about people's lives outside of quilting and just understanding the maker as a whole. So it is my absolute favorite. However, I do follow some accounts that I really don't care for anymore. And I know there's makers out there that I'd like to start following. One of my favorite things on Instagram is that Tula Pink does uh, a talk every Tuesday. And I look forward to that so much. I love seeing Tula design and how she, her process is and it's an unedited uh, video of her so it's really a cool way to get to know your makers better. There's also a ton of other digital inspiration sources out there. There's blogs and websites and shops and then there's also other social media that I didn't even mention like Twitter and Reddit and Twitch and probably many others that I'm not even aware of. <laughs> so this week I want to challenge you to look at those digital sources of inspiration and clean them up and get them to a point that they are helping us be better makers. Now let's talk about digital patterns because if you're like me, you've downloaded patterns and you don't even exactly know where they're at on your computer. So this is something that I need to work on too. And honestly, I tend to print the patterns and I don't know where the digital copy is on my computer. So I need to go and find them and get them into a folder so I can access them if I need to. One thing about digital patterns that you may not know is that on Etsy, when you purchase a digital pattern for download, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, it's still in your orders folder on that website so you can re-download it too. Now some do have an expiration date and will not be available after a certain time, but usually it says it in the pattern if that is the case. 
And finally, the last digital resource, at least that I can think of, I'm sure there's others, but the last resource that I can think of is our quilting friends. Uh, if you're like me, I have a few friends that I've actually met through groups or met through digital classes that I've taken that have become very close to me. There's also a ton, a ton of digital classes you can take now. If it's one thing that this whole year has given us, it's that a lot of makers have switched to digital content and uh, offered online classes, online challenges, and even online guilds that you can join. So it's a lot of fun to kind of go out and see what other relationships you can make with other quilters. It's so important as makers to nurture those relationships. And even continuing nurturing the non-digital friends, of course, and uh, hopefully quilt guilds are gonna start opening back up again and quilt shops and then quilt shows and all that wonderful stuff that we love as quilters and that really help us and inspire us as makers. So let's talk about your tasks this week. The first thing I'm going to challenge you to do, and it's something I'm going to do myself, is to clean up your digital sources of quilting inspiration, whether it be leaving Facebook groups that aren't serving you anymore, or joining some new Facebook groups, or looking at Instagram in a new kind of way, and seeing some of the reels and some of the videos, following your favorite designers, but also maybe unfollowing some of the designers that aren't serving you, and cleaning that up. Also, our Pinterest boards can get very crowded, can't they? Uh, to a point that you're like, I don't even know what I have anymore. So I challenge you to clean them up, maybe make some new folders and uh, decide, you know, what are you really gonna make and make, maybe make a priority folder too. Next, I'm gonna challenge you to locate and to uh, file or containerize somehow digitally all those digital patterns that you have that are kind of spread out all over. And that may mean re-downloading something or you could even scan in some of your patterns too and organize your digital content that way. The next task that I'm gonna challenge you with is to build that quilting tribe. Get out of your comfort zone a little, make some friends, maybe join a class, maybe go to a quilt shop and ask the owners or ask even the workers, you know, where is a local quilt guild that you could join? Find out about quilt circles, different things that you could really build that quilting tribe. I honestly don't believe as quilters that we are meant to do this alone, that this is something that we share passion for. And when you have other people in your life that have the same interests, that can be a great source of inspiration. So absolutely nurture that. And for your fun task, which you probably have guessed what it is, pick something that you have digital and make it. Take advantage of this great resource we have with this computer in front of us. Uh, maybe watch some YouTube videos even, or you know, get on interest, follow your favorite designers, see what they're up to, see what the new fabric lines that are coming out for the fall look like. For example, I love, love, love this Halloween collection and I can't wait to get my hands on it. There's also some Christmas stuff coming out and just check it out. It's really worth it and it's a lot of fun to do. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so blessed to have this platform, this digital platform, to discuss all this and more with you. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so, and I hope you have a wonderful week. One last note, I am taking next week off. It is Memorial Day and it is the fifth Monday of the month. So this is gonna still keep us on track for 25 weeks of organization, but it's also gonna give me a little bit of a breather uh, that's gonna allow me to get ahead on my recording a little bit because if you didn't know, uh, we have a new addition to our family and she's taking up a lot of my time. I'm still trying to figure out my schedule. And of course, I still don't have a door. So that's a whole nother issue. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you soon. Have a great week and make sure you make some time to quilt.